Welcome! This is Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features electronic magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are the features we have for you this week. On Motoring Forum, we shall have the LRT2 East Extension Project Construction Progress. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smarts portion centers on what to do when one encounters a solid yellow line with broken yellow line road marking. This week's Spying Chauffeur shall be about the illegal practice of most PUV drivers of overloading passengers. The public service segment shall have the government's reaction on the Basic Clearing Operations complaints. Showcase this week shall have the subcompact SUV from JAC, the S2 1.5 liter CVT Intelligent. While for race weekend, we'll have the highlights of the 2019 Phoenix National Slalom Series Leg 7 held in Robinson's Novaliches. All of these plus the latest news on the country's transportation and traffic management are in this edition of Motor In Today. Join us! Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me, my kind of jam. My passion, my blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Calling all automobile enthusiasts. Autofocus.com.ph is exclusive to the automobile where you'll find reviews on the latest brand new car models together with their head-to-head -head comparisons. It has the detailed specs of car models available in the country and their latest SRPs and special promos together with the latest auto industry news and developments like car launches and test drives. Autofocus.com.ph is all about automobiles. Click on! Part of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven-seater in style. All-new El Tiga debut. Welcome back. Motoring Today now starts with the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. It could be recalled that the Metro Manila local government units have been given 60 days by the DILG to reclaim obstructed roads to ease traffic congestion in the metropolis. A month into intensive clearing operations, the local government units expressed their confidence in meeting the timeline. During the recent 25th Metro Manila Council meeting, MMDA Chairman Danny Lim, Metro Manila mayors have reported that intensified clearing operations against all kinds of obstruction in their areas of jurisdiction are on track to comply with the directive of the DILG to reclaim all public roads. 
In Paranaque City, Mayor Edwin Olivares cited that clearing operations are still ongoing, particularly in the vendor-infested Baclara. Pasay City Mayor Emmy Calixto Rubiano said major thoroughfares have been cleared while 75% of the barangay roads have yet to be cleared, also in coordination with Paranaque City Government. Pasig City Mayor Vico Soto reported that 50 to 60 percent of national and secondary roads have been cleared while tertiary roads are still being cleared. He stressed that vendors who keep on returning to the streets remain to be a problem. For Quezon City, an official representing the city said that 142 barangays have been cooperative in clearing the operations. He cited that majority of the Mabuhay lanes have been cleared. San Juan City Mayor Francis Zamora, Taguig City Vice Mayor Ricardo Cruz Jr., and Makati City Vice Mayor Monique Lagdameo also gave reports on their progress of their operations in their respective cities. MMDA Chairman Danny Lim said barangay officials are responsible in ensuring that cleared roads remain clear even after the deadline given by the DILG. Meanwhile, DOTR Secretary Arthur Tugade delivered the keynote speech at the 2019 Annual Metro Pacific Tollways Corporation or MPTC Management Conference. The official presented the completed ongoing and future transport infrastructure projects and programs of the DOTR. With the theme Build as One, the event was meant to further strengthen the working relationship of different organizations and government agencies including the DOTR as MPTC's major partner in the construction, management, and improvement of various toll infrastructure projects in the country. Highlighting the ongoing and completed projects under the DOTR, Secretary Tugade said their goal is to accomplish the interoperability of tollway systems as well as the modernization of public transportation. The transportation chief also stressed the importance of cooperation between public and private sectors in order to get more efficient results. He said it is through partnerships between the two sectors that the DOTR is able to deliver. Tugade Freely also answered questions on issues such as private sector investments in tollways, emergency powers, and the crafting of a 30-year national transportation roadmap. Continuing, the DOTR and the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, or UNESCAP, jointly led the recent Capacity Development Workshop on Road Safety for the Southeast Asia subregion. The event aimed to tackle an in-depth take into the development of implementation plans on speed limit and drunk driving as causes of road traffic crashes, fatalities, and injuries. The Capacity Development Workshop on Road Safety also aimed to promote regional cooperation and collective action in pursuit of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Sustainable Development Goals. In his speech, LTO Chief Edgar Galvante urged the general motoring public to participate and engage in the said workshop. The official also added that it should be everyone's goal to eradicate road traffic crashes and reduce its impact on the individual and to the community. Meanwhile, Undersecretary for Road Transport and Infrastructure Mark De Leon said, one good way to reduce road crashes is to create more infrastructures and formulate policies. However, the official noted that it is more important to work towards behavioral changes of the road users. The attendees also participated in the study tour at the MMDA's Command Center and PNP HPG's Data for Road Incident Visualization, Evaluation, and Reporting System, or Drivers Operation Center. The Capacity Development Workshop on Road Safety was attended by representatives from various Southeast Asian countries, together with their source speakers and international consultants from the private sector. And finally, the LTFRB has led the inaugural ceremony for the first taxi services in Region 1. This is the government's response to the increasing demand for additional mode of transportation for the area's growing population and the steady rise of tourism in Ilocos. Ilocos Transport Co-op was granted the franchise to operate from Ilocos Sur to any point in Region 1, while Troy Darren Express was granted franchise for Ilocos Norte to any point in Region 1 as well both with 15 service-ready units. The opening of new routes and franchise for taxi services in the region is part of the PUV modernization program, which aims to modernize the public transportation sector in the country. The event saw great support from the local government of Ilogos. 
The LTFRB said they stick with their commitment to provide safe, reliable, comfortable, affordable, and environmentally sustainable public transportation to the commuting public. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum, brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. Here's Ray Louie. Thanks, Suzy. Concluding the Build, Build, Build media tour is the inspection on the ongoing construction at the Emerald Station of the LRT2 East Extension Project in Marikina City. During the tour, DOTR Undersecretary for Railways, TJ Batan, bear that the agency inspected the site for about three times already just this year. This is the third time na bibisitahin po natin tong proyektong to, just this uh, 2019. First po was no Holy Week. Kung maalala nyo po si Secretary mismo uh, nag-lead no start of work ceremony natin para dun sa package 3 or yung electromechanical systems component nung project. Then last June 29, uh, si Secretary also did the site inspection of all the projects. The commitment and dedication of the contractors and the implementing partners are very evident in the inspection done as stated by Yusek Batan. Yung progress po natin this past few months has really been a demonstration dun po sa commitment ng ating uh, contractor and yung dedication po ng ating uh, implementing partner for this project, LRTA, na matapos po itong project na to as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the project manager reports the completion rate of the East Extension as of June 2019 and adds that the target date of completion is by this month. We are already at least an 88% complete na po dito sa Emerald Station. So right now, we are targeting po na to finish the station, the two stations by September. So right now, we are doing the ceiling installation na. So this is one of the final stages po ng uh, project. So after this, we will proceed with the installation of the electricals na and the final structural uh, uh, component. Mga tiling works, we will finish it up. The officials led the tour and gave the media an overview of its facilities. Dito po tayo sa platform area, so this is where the yung mga passenger po natin will uh, take during operation na. Dito po sila magpo-presto. So dito po, at sa baba naman natin, dito po yung viaduct natin. For our viaduct po kasi, completed na po to last June 2018. Moreover, the installation of the electromechanical system in the extension project is also in line. We are just waiting for the installation of the electromechanical system. The NTP po for the, our package 3 for the last package of the East Extension project was issued last July 4. Also, during the start of work ceremony in the Emerald Station, Marikina representative Bayani Fernando suggested to rename the said station into the name of the city. Our team asked the DOTR an update about this matter. We're working on the renaming of the Emerald Station into Marikina Station. Tulad nga nung sabi ni Secretary during the start of work ceremony, it's just uh, going through a process and uh, as soon as uh, we finish this process, then uh, we'll make the announcement. According to the officials, the start of operation is expected by December 2020. DOTR USEC TJ Batan and Engineer Dexter Buenconsejo from the Transport Agency and the LRTA. Our guests this week on Motoring Today's Motoring Forum, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Ako po si Michael Kaliwag, labing dalawang taon ng patrol crew para sa Enlex Esitex. Bilang patrol crew, handa akong marap sa anumang di nasa ang sitwasyon. Naalala ko pa noon, 2009, bagyong ondoy. 
nagpapatrol kami sa index nang may nakita kami isang pamilya na natrap sa bubong. Kahit kailangan magpatrol, nagdesisyon kami na sagapin at iligtas sila. Kami ang NLEX SETEX Patrol Crew, kaagapay at katuwag nyo sa mas maayos na paglalakbay. Continuing with motoring today, here once again is this week's series of valuable motoring tips. We start off with road safety reminders on the Young Street Smarts portion courtesy of Toyota Motor Philippines. Solid yellow line with broken yellow lines is often found on bridges to separate the traffic. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay bawal kang lumipat papunta sa opposite side kung hindi ay maaari mong makabangga ang nasa kabila katulad ng ipinapakita sa animation. Stay on your lane all the time and do not overtake. Proper driver's demeanor, especially among drivers of public utility vehicles, is one of the major concerns we are addressing on our segment, Bayang Chuper, courtesy of Mitsubishi Motors Philippines. Payong Chuper lang kaibigan. Ako si Jeffrey, isang kapwa niyo Chuper. Huwag mong hayaang may sumabit sa likuran ng iyong jeep. Delikado ang may sabit sa jeep. Maaring pagmula nito ng aksidente at may masaktan o masawi. Kapag puno na sa loob at may gusto pang humabol, agad na pagbawalan upang disgrasya ay maiwasan. Tandaan, kaligtasan bago ang ano paman. Ito po si Jeffrey Hamot. Payong chuper lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapwa niyo chuper. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Be part of the 2019 2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA 2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. The Tactical Survival in Arms Expo is back on another leg with a more intensive take on the global issues on environment, economic uncertainty, security threats, and the like. Visitors may avail of the free seminar during the event. The Visayas leg of the Expo will take place on September 5-8 to 8 at the Cebu Trade Hall, 3rd level of SM City Cebu. 
Admission is free. You can pre-register online by logging on to the Tax Expo site. See you at the Cebu leg of the 2019 Tactical Survival and Arms Expo. Welcome back. We now welcome you to Motoring Today's World of Motorsports. We start with the latest news and developments. The third leg of the 2019 Vios Racing Festival was held over two cloudy and wet days at the Clark International Speedway. It featured the third round of the Vios Holocaust Challenge as well as races 4, 5, and 6 of the Vios Circuit Championship. The third time out of the competitors of the Autocross Challenge saw the phenom Inigo Anton topping the car club class with Cody Nang coming in as first runner-up and Mickey Carbonell as second runner-up. Jose Luis Altaveras of AutoIndustria.com made it three in a row as champion of the media class with Earl Davidson Lee of AutoDeal in first runner-up and Chuy Bujillon of Manila Times as the second runner-up. The social media personalities class as Jules Aquino ending up as champion with Ref Bangsil and Jun Sunga respectively as first and second runners-up. With all three classes, the celebrity, promotional, and sporting classes running on the same grid, the three scheduled races over the two days of the second leg of the Vios Circuit Championship were all action-packed and dramatic, made all the more so by the rainy weather. Troy Montero bested the five others competing in race 4 of the celebrity class. Julian Tang topped the promotional class while the sporting class saw Red Diva finishing first. The incident filled race 5 saw Troy again classified first. Ellis Minorca topped the promotional class while Eggy Ong prevailed in the sporting class. With Troy not starting, Daniel Matsunaga claimed the top of the podium of the celebrity class in race 6. Elise proved she could race well in wet conditions to finish first in the promotional class. Eggy made it 2 out of 3 victories for the leg with another win in race 6 of the sporting class. The 2019 Vios Racing Festival has another leg left on the calendar to be held in November 8-9 at the Clark International Speedway. More in the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today as we now give you Race Weekend. Slalom King Milo Rivera returns to familiar haunts to add more excitement to Leg 7 of the 2019 Race Motorsports Club National Slalom Series. Not that the series lacks excitement as many have come out strongly to claim the overall champion. Still, Milo can't help show everyone he is still the king of slaloms. We're here for another round of the 2019 Phoenix National Slalom Series and this time here at Robinson's Novaliches as we approach the midway point of the season. The 2019 National Slalom Series began with the knowledge that Slalom King Milo Rivera, the man who dominated slaloms for more than half a decade, will not be returning to the Pandit's crown. The Slalom King did appear at a number of rounds, mainly to fulfill corporate commitments and to keep his racing chops honed for his return to circuit racing. And it's exciting for both racers and spectators whenever Milo returns to parking lot racing. Leg 7 is no different as the Slalom King showed up to compete. I'm here with five-time Slalom champion Milo Rivera. Hi Milo, Hi. good to see you here. It's good to be back. Uh, good to see you guys again. and. Good to be back racing slalom for after a very long time. Yeah. So, uh, do you actually miss the, the energy here? Not just here in Novo, just but the, the, the slalom energy that the sport gives you? So to speak, it's good to be home. You know, I've been racing slalom for the longest time until I stopped. It's good to be racing slalom for the longest time after I stopped um, at the beginning of the year. But, you know, it feels good, as you said. I miss the competition. I miss the whole format. I miss the racetrack. Mm -hmm. And... I missed the cone, so to speak. So it's good to be back in a in familiar territory. And looks like with how things are going, um, the race tracks have missed me as well. You left the sport or the league uh, a year ago, uh, and you continue to pursue another racing league. What can you see with the developing drivers that you left uh, behind? How can you see them uh, progress this year? Well, the ladder has been very, very. Um, steep for these guys in terms of um, their development 
and they've been climbing it very successfully. We have the drivers uh, like Pawi and the other guys from um, Bulacan and from everywhere improving and improving and improving. The competition becomes so, so tight that, that it becomes begins to be more unpredictable in terms of class wins and overall as well. But that's how slalom is supposed to be, that's how racing is supposed to be, it's a competition. So with that, I'm very happy with how things have been. In Milo's absence, his brother Estefano has emerged atop strong contenders for the Slalom King title. So far, as you said, halfway through the season, I believe we're first in the championship. So, and I w think I won four out of the six races. So I think I'm pretty happy for with the results. So I just want to keep on improving. Of course, of course, you can even if you win, there's still always room for improvement. Not just for me, but for the team. But yeah, we're really comfortable right now. Estefano is far from bothered by his brother making sporadic appearances at slaloms. In fact. He revels in battles with his brother and sees some benefits too with sharing the same car in competition. Well, of course, even if he's not in the championship, I take every race differently. Like, a new race is a new day. Of course, you have to also think about the championship, but of course, you have to take each race as important. Always go for the win. Kait kapatid ko siya, kuya ko siya. Kailangan po rin talunin. Pero, yeah, in a good note, of course, we're. Not just improving ourselves, but improving the car because every race we can see improvement with the car. So Miles is also there not just to battle me, but also to give feedback to the setup also as today, as we said a while ago. Well, there is healthy interest in the battle for the overall and Stalem King title without the defending champion, the same is true in the novice category, where the 2018 novice champion, Paui Base, has necessarily stepped up in class and now is a contender for the overall crown. This time, another name has emerged to dominate the novice category. Midway through the season, Rod Chang is yet to be defeated in the fight for fastest novice in every round. Actually, this year is my first time for campaigning for the novice overall uh, uh, champ uh, championship. No? First of all, I would like to thank my teammate for helping me build my uh, race car and helping me set up the car for this year. As you can see, leading for this year, but uh, at the end of the day, it ain't over till it's over because there are still other good drivers who, who are also campaigning for the Novice Overall Championship. This is already our seventh year, seventh leg for getting the championship for the no Novice. Rod is not about to rest on his laurels even after keeping his win streak alive through seven rounds. I still need to, to practice more and hopefully I'm looking forward into getting yung perfect 10 straight because as of the moment I'm already on the 7th seven, seven straight victory. Also a contender for the Novice Overall Class Championship is Leonard Cristobal. Only on his second year in slalom racing, but his first year of looking to complete a full season of competition in Novice category. So far, I just need to be more consistent sa, sa laro ko. Every round is a new set of challenges and a new opportunity to test new um, techniques, try new other maneuvers. So every round is a learning process. Today's race, I'm falling behind the two novice leaders. So there's JP Polentan and uh, Rod Chang right now. So I think I'm third sa time nila. So up until now, hinahabul ko pa yung oras. So good luck sa next four runs ko pa. When all entries from the novice to the pro and open classes have completed their runs in the seventh round of the 2019 National Slalom Series, Milo showed everyone why he is a five-time slalom champion by setting the fastest time of the day. There you have it, another race slayed for the 2019 Phoenix National Slalom Series. Tune in again next week for more Race Weekend action.
Estefano Rivera now has the upper hand in the fight for the overall championship, but there are good drivers expected to challenge him for the Slalom King title in the second half of this busy and exciting season for local motorsports, which also means it will be a busy last few months of the year for race weekend. That's this week's world of motorsports. Motoring Today continues right after this break. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Be part of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. NLEX Viaje Tips presents Healthy Road Trip. It's time for that much-awaited vacation, but here are a few things to watch out for. Sitting for long periods of time can form blood clots in your body like in the legs. To avoid that, stop for a quick break. Get up and move around to get your blood pumping. Car air conditioners speed up dehydration, so make sure to drink water frequently. Lastly, while driving, protect your eyes from the sun by wearing UV blocking sunglasses. And for a smoother trip up north, you can now drive all the way to your destination with one RFID. Get your Easy Trip RFID sticker now. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. <laughs> Sunshine Television and Motoring Today's main man, Mr. Ray Bush Gamboa, sat with the president of Toyota Motor Philippines, Mr. Satoru Suzuki, to discuss the latest from the car brand. According to Mr. Suzuki, 2018 was a difficult year for the company as it faced challenges because of the newly implemented automotive excise tax program then. However, the president said that the company continues to thrive this 2019. First of all, let me introduce to you here. The gentleman I'm with, he is one of the busiest Japanese executives in the Philippines now. Well, what else can you expect for being the head of the top automotive company in the country that has been leading or getting what they call the triple crown, which means top in commercial vehicle sales, top in total and passenger vehicle sales. As they say, it's hard to go up, but it's harder to stay up. 
So he's one of the busiest Japanese executives in the Philippines. What can you say to that, sir? <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. And also, very happy to see you again. Uh, so you, you look uh, getting better and better. And so Thank you. Uh, happy now. Anyway, sir, how do you find 2019 as far as the automotive industry is concerned? Yeah, uh, last year we had a very difficult time because of the automotive excise tax increase together with the other economic factors like inflation or interest rate hike. So our market last year was so low compared to our original expectations or the performance up to the year 2017. But uh, this year, showing the some recovery from January up to July, actually this current pace of the market is on our plan originally established at the end of last year. So, so far it's a good uh, sign we, we can see. One of Toyota's latest products is the Hi-A Super Gundia, which comes in three new variants, Elite Leather and Fabric. It's equipped with a series of developments on the design, performance, and safety features. The exterior has been refined as well as the interior. Yeah, this Super Grandia is, uh, as the name is saying, this is a one rank higher uh, in terms of uh, luxurious interior, riding comfort, uh, also the exterior design. So uh, Grandia and the commuter is just a regular people mover. But this one is people mover in luxury. Then we can offer the uh, very high grade of the uh, riding comfort. Uh, this is some kind of uh, a one lang higher version of the uh, other regular Grandia or commuters, highest, other highest series. Rolls-Royce Motor Cars has announced that it will be offering to collectors an extremely limited Zenith Collector's Edition of Rolls-Royce Ghost. With only 50 available units, the Ghost Zenith Collection will feature the highest levels of bespoke ever seen on a Ghost Collection car. The Ghost Zenith Collection is similar to the 200EX in a sense that it is engraved with the three key design lines of Ghost. The collection's own spirit of ecstasy and clock are engraved with the name of this highly anticipated collection. It is also equipped with a blueprint-inspired artwork that has been divided into 50 distinct parts, allowing each Ghost Zenith customer their own personal and individual work of art, while at the same time uniting the collection as a group homage to Ghost. According to Rolls-Royce Motor Cars, the Ghost Zenith collection provides customers with a rare opportunity to own a motor car like the Zenith. The company added that the Ghost is the most successful Rolls-Royce ever created and the Zenith collection marks an important milestone in their modern history. Hyundai Asia Resources Incorporated, the official distributor of Hyundai vehicles in the Philippines, announces a 2% growth in the first seven months of 2019, equivalent to 19,790 units sold compared to the 19,478 sold in the same period last year. According to the South Korean automaker, the brand's performance for the year can be attributed to the strong sales in the light commercial vehicle segment, which grew by 28% in the commercial vehicle segment, with 140% recorded year-to-date growth. Moreover, the passenger car segment continued to be fueled by the brand's flagship models, the Accent and the Reina, which was launched early this year. This year has been challenging for the automotive industry, but Hyundai's modest growth reflects its resilience and strong brand anchored on reliable and comfortable vehicles, superior customer service, and continuing programs to ensure worry-free ownership, Audi President and CEO Maria Fe Perez Agudo said. With key programs in the pipeline, we aim to end the year strong, Ms. Agudo added. We have more about the local auto industry as now give you our Car of the Week on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. What we have on Showcase this week is a car that aims to be a game changer in the SUV segment. A Chinese vehicle that has a lot to offer. Watch this.
That was the JAC S2 1.5 liter CVT Intelligent. A car that has arrived in the local market with style and substance. Our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24 hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program. 100% worry-free driving. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Be part of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. On the final stretch of motoring today, we have our public service segment brought to you by Honda Cars Philippines. In the clearing operations held in the city of Pasi, which we were also able to witness, a number of road obstructions were demolished. This includes security outposts, illegal vendors' paraphernalia, and vehicles that are illegally parked. We asked the vendor on his reaction on this and his positive about this move of the government. One notable discovery in the operations is an illegal terminal that's been existing for quite a while. Commuters who are using the said terminal were dead worried about their transportation. According to Pasig City Mayor Vico Soto, they are working on identifying permanent terminals for his constituents, as well as on tracking down colorum vehicles. Yes, alam naman po natin kung gaano kahirap ang, uh, ang mass transportation. Kulang na kulang po talaga ang mass transportation dito. What we have been doing, even for uh, tricycle terminals, UV terminals, we have been working on identifying permanent terminals para sa kanila. Kasi kung meron naman tayong permanent terminals, hindi na nila kailanganin pumunta dun sa illegal. Magka-crack down po tayo dun sa mga colorum kasi hindi rin po ito safe para sa mga pasahero. We also asked the good mayor on how they will make sure that illegal terminals wouldn't be present anymore in the city. This is where consistency will take place. Consistency po tayo, consistency po ng ating TPMO and gaya po ng sabi ni Chairman kanina, kailangan po yung barangay natin tutulong po talaga. Uh, meron na tayong clear instructions from our national government, from the President. Meron din pong clear warning na kung hindi tayo mag-comply o kung lax po tayo o negligent sa ating trabaho, ay uh, masususpindi po tayo. Kaya kailangan pati from the barangay level, uh, all the way to the national level, lahat po tayo consistent at babalik-balikan po natin yung mga illegal terminals na yun. The Pasig City Mayor happily shared that residents in the area are very much cooperative in this directive of the national government. That was Motoring Today's public service segment courtesy of Honda Cars Philippines. We'd like to urge the public to help us solve motoring problems in our midst by referring them to us 
so we can in turn bring them to the attention of the involved authorities. Please refer to the screen regarding our contact details. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, don't forget to check us out on our social media accounts. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 33rd year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of Butch Gamboa, our dad, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.